และควรงานเทเลเทคกันไปพร้อมๆ I think it's all t h e t a b l e available so we will we'll continue the same today so I'm going to you know explain about like how to create the table all those stuff Hello, Mohan, are you there? Uh, oh, okay, guys. Uh, So let, let, let us start with the other table. So, so far we have seen like uh, how to create variable, like you know single value and uh, multi values. Multi values is how in the other we have seen right. Uh, let me just say that very simple. Like where we have to push the same type of elements. Okay, that means that the data. If I'm declaring one variable, where if it is integer type of variable, so I'm going to push only integer type of information into that. If I'm de declaring a string array, where I'm going to, what I'm trying to say, I'm going to push only string type of information. That is what we have seen yesterday, right? And uh, let's move on to this. Let's go to the pastorial. In the project, so this is what we have discussed yesterday. I mean, last class. So coming to this one, I'm going to talk about completely Anyone is facing issue with the audio? I think some uh, chat is going on. Ah, uh, no, we are good. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. 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 Where we are going to use in there? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yes, one. We are able to hear you. Able to hear me, right? Yeah. Yes, Mohan. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. I thought somebody is talking. So if you want to store, so far you have seen how to store a single value and multi values into the variable. Now I want to store a big pieces of information. Like if you want to store entire you know, spreadsheet which which contains thousand records, two thousand records. Okay, so where I'm going to read the data from the Excel and the same data I'm going to push it into. I'm going to push it into a data table. Data to data table. Mm -hmm. table. So this type of operations, if you want to do it, then you have go ahead with data table variable. So, which is going to act like a database. So, data, you know what is the database? Right, where we are going to store the data. So, in the form of collection of rows and columns, right? The same thing. I am going to store. Uh, you know, it's acting like you know database or a simple spreadsheet, which rows which contain like rows and columns operations. 
So this data table you know, data type can be found in system dot data dot data table name space. So this is we can found in system dot data dot data table name space. This is one of the name space where we can find the data table so data type. So when we are going to use this is very pretty much useful when we are going to migrate specific data from one database to another database. Now I'm migrating from no sequels to Oracle something there are some cases which we have to do. So if I'm reading data from the so by using UA plot I can do migrate so by using data table so data type easily because I'm going to get the data from the, the SQL server I'm going to store it in the data table so from the data table I'm going to push it into Oracle so this is the way I mean this is where I'm going to, I'm going to use it if you want to extract data from the website so normally right so in the website you may have one table which contains different types of rows and columns and it, it has been structurally defined so in this case what we have to do so I'm going to use in data scrapping mechanism so by using that I'm going to scrap the entire data to a particular table so finally I'm going to push this table into my data table data type so that is where so it is easily you no know, I mean this is where we are going to use the data table most most of the cases into a real-time environment so let us flip to the UI path studio here I'm going to explain about how we have to create you know so first of all how we have to create data table and how we are going to push how we have to create the columns into that and how we are going to push data into the typically and we have different types of ways to push into the data into the data table so we will see one by one if you could type here in the activities panel so data here we go these many operations we have add data row add data column build data table clear data table get row item make to data table so output data table remove so these are very very important activities in the real time environment when we work with any table operation so make sure that so we are going to use this type of activities first of all if you want to build a data table how you have to build a data table so we're using build data table activity so i'm going to build one table so in drag and drop it is going to by default it's going to you know shows a data table so when you click on it so here we go here I can able to select us let us delete existing columns and rows and how to create same over when I click on plus button here here it is going to ask us what is the column name type it's going to allow null value it is an auto increment the same thing like how we are creating one column and to say that when one column into the database so the same thing I'm going to create here let's take example I'm going to create one student management system you know, table so where I'm just going to give SMO. SMO is like, so what type of data, I mean, so we have discussed about now, they are variable and they are data, right? SMO, no, most of the cases, we are going to store the integer values, right? So I'm going to click on integer and I'm just clicking OK. And I'm clicking plus. Plus, in the sense, if you want to add one more column into the data table, so I can add it. So by using so plus column, I mean plus button, so it is going to display the same pop up. So where we can, I'm just going to give, you know, here I'm giving yes name. So by default, I mean, there there is a string, and I click plus, and I'm just giving, I'm going to add course, enter, and I'm going to plus. So I'm going to click on plus, and, this is, and I'm going to give one more column name called C. And this is the, this the example C maybe an integer or something else. Okay. And finally, so here I just added the see here when I add the columns, it is going to display the column name along with the type. Okay. So SN was the integer part, SNS name is called string part, course is also string part, P is, is now integer part. If you want to add the data into you now into the in this way but tactically so in this way we can push the data data right now as and go now forces MCA and C is like uh, 15,000 click enter so click on the S and go in row so do 
let's say example MBA and get some information into something like this. So once you create one data table, right? So make sure that so I want to give one. So make sure that see, I just think about the you know, environment aspect. I'm going to scrap the data from the you know website. This information I want to store it in somewhere. Where well, you want to store it? I want to store it in data table, right? So before scrapping, so make sure that you have to create one data table where how I'm going to create. So. Okay, I'm just deleting this too. I'm going to add new variable. So DT student. So this type of what is this? This is the type of data table. So both types. System dot data dot data table. Copies and and when you create any data table, to make sure they have to fit instance. How you are going to instance that they're creating, no, uh, I'm creating memory at the runtime allocation. So make sure that you have to fit instance when you create, no, when I work on the data table operations. New system dot data dot data table. I have done instantiation. I got nothing but I'm just creating an object for this, and along with that, I'm just creating memory for this variable. So then, here, right, just click on this properties output. The so output of entire table, right, where I want to store entire information. I want to store it into DT. Now my table is ready. My, my table. Is ready, which what is the name of this table? This table is nothing but the data student, so it's contains four columns and three rows information. And click on OK. Now, so I want to print the data from the data table. How we are going to print it? So by using output data table. So output data table is an activity which is going to use you now printing data from the data table. So directly I can print the data table. So what is the input for this one? So which table you are going to print it here? I'm going to print student. Okay. So what is the output of this one? This output is nothing but the text format. So finally, this activity does it is take up the input of the data table and it is going to convert entire data table into one string string object. So here on the fly, if you put control K, we can create the variable name. STR output. STR output. So, enter information, just got converted in the string, and finally, I'm going to print student information. What is that? Final output is str. That's it. So this is a way of creating a table, and this table I'm going to, if you want to print it on the screen, to make sure that before that should be converted to string. So for converting string, we need output data table activity. It is going to take input as a table which we are going to convert into string. So this one the finally it is going to give us a string object. So this thing I'm just simply printing on the right line. Save this and run. Here we go. See, those are the column names. So, so, and just give us information. This 
or the columns and column names which I have given four column names and three rows. So this is how I just want to read it and I want to push it into this one. Instead, right, what I want to do, so whatever the read information, so I need, and I know what I'm trying to say, the entire table information, I want to push it into the entire data table information, I want to push it into um, one Excel, when I, I want to push an Excel sheet. How am I going to push Excel sheet? Excel operations. Click on Excel. So we have this many activities for using Excel on the Excel operations. So right range in activity. So what it does. I'm going to pick, you know, there are two types of, of right ranges available. We'll talk about that, that too. What is the difference? For time, I'm just using this workbook range. Okay. So, what is the path? So, by default, I'm just giving like student information. Info. Dot Excel. So for which table you are going to push, it is called DT student. And here range, I don't want to be no empty. Close this and run it. Here, as well, I have printed. Let's put the physical part of this project. So I think it's got created here as well. Right. <clears throat> here we go. Let's write the column names of this page here. Just click on add headers. Save this. And then it again. Right, because we are already open, so make sure that you have to close this one by before writing into that. So I'm just closing this, save it, and then it again. Very simple step here. If we want to write you no know, normally if we were using a C sharp or Java, right? We want to push this information into the layer table. So we have to write you know, a couple of lines of code and where we, we I mean we have to push the data I mean data into the layer table. Here this is pretty much simple for reading. I mean 
pushing data into the database very very easy see here so very simple i'm just creating build data table and here what i'm doing so i'm just um, entire data table i'm going to push if you want to push into the excel sheet right so here right range and activity is just going to push the data into the data table sorry into the excel sheet here so what is the file name this is a which you have given this which is going to store it into a physical part of the file if you want to change the part you can change up this one because you want to write write this entire excel sheet so so what is the sheet name so sheet name it which sheet name you are writing to that and this is student so this is student is also nothing but so which table you from the which table you are going to push the data into the excel sheet so here right so add header is enough one of the important passwords so what happens if you are not checking this one which is not going to add the headers into the um data table so we click on add headers check box so which is going to add the headers from the data table to excel sheet any queries so far Uh, hi Mohan. Yes. Uh, while while creating the data table, uh, is there any constraint similar to the database tables? Like uh, there should be a, a primary uh, key type of column. Yeah, that is what here, right? Yeah, we have the serial number here, but uh, yes. is it always uh, uh, mandatory for any data table? So just make sure, right? See, whenever it's like act like you know uh, one table how you are creating into. So obviously, always to have a create you no know, one primary uh, primary key of the particular table, so which is going to you know maintain unique information into that uh, the table, right? Yeah. But when you're creating you no know, table, it is not a mandatory, right? Here, see, because yes. I'm not uh, here. What I'm doing, I'm just creating one table. So I'm just statically I'm pushing data. Tomorrow, what you will do, you are going to read the data from the table or from the website or from uh, database, right? But all the database may have designed in by using primary key object. I mean, primary key you know, that is called RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. They make sure that they have to follow the rules and regulations of the, the database operations. All right. Yeah. But here it is not a mandatory to get the primary key all the stuff here. Because I'm just creating no. the category, how we are going to create the column, I mean column names, and how we are going to push the data into that. Okay, okay more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, clear. Any more queries? Fine. So, so far, I just, you know, uh, we created, like, you know, I'm just creating one table, and then we have pushed into one. I mean, Excel sheet. Now, what I'm doing, right? I just uh, let's create one say Excel. I mean, uh, Excel. From Excel, I want to read that operation. I want to perform on the same Excel sheet. Okay. So let us do addition of two numbers. So we're using Excel operations. So let me, I'm just creating number one column name, the number two column. Here yeah, I'm just okay. So let us save this into the desktop, saying that. I'll do this like this and just replace this. Okay. Now what is what I want to do? I want to read this information. This information I want to push it into one data table. From the data table, I want to loop through the data table. So, and finally I want to do I want to read the row by row from this table and I want to some of these two numbers, I want to push it here. This is a small example which we are going to do now. I'm just creating a new sequence. Data table addition 
entiendes? Now, I, as we discussed, right, if you want to read the data from the data, I mean, to read the Excel sheet, we have this activity called Excel R. So we have two types of things. One is a workbook and Excel operations. If you go with Excel, how we are going to read it, if you go with the you know, workbook, how we are going to read it, we, we will see in detail now. For the time being, let's go with Excel operations. If you want to go with any Excel, you know, if you want to go ahead with any Excel operation to make sure that first of all we have to include the Excel application scope. So every when you, you know, drag and drop Excel application scope here, which is going to ask like where from where you want to read this. I mean where you want to read or write something. So no, where you want to read it here if I want to read the data from addition. Finally, if this one right. Okay, so what do you want to do? Uh, in do contains, the default is come up with one sequence which contains some operations. All the operations, whatever, like if, if you want to read the operation to Excel, if you want to write the operation to Excel. So all the operations I'm going to do in the, inside this scope, inside this Excel application scope. Then what I order the next step? I, I'm just rewriting the region, region in activity. Here, here, read range is not asking any path because this is from Excel application scope, right? So what is say if you go ahead with Excel, so it is come up with some issue that first of all we have to include the Excel application scope, then only I can operate the read range operations. So in the same phrase, I mean in the same case, right? So we have This is Excel, already we have seen the drag and drop. So workbook is also nothing but like you know it's Excel format, the same thing. But here it is working like individual. So it is come up with where you want to store, and already we have seen previous example, right? It is going to ask us right, for each and every I'm just going in this way. It's a big range and right cell right range or something whatever it is right so here it is come up with um, path this come up with path here also come up with path but here right it should not come up with path because this is the scope inside the scope i'm going to do on all the operations so that is what my most I mean, difference between the workflow activities and excel activities so for the time being i'm just going with excel application scope in the future, we are going to use the workbook activities. Fine. So, in this read range, I am reading the data into the from the Excel, right? For that, I want to store it into somewhere. What is that? I want to store it in the data table. How we are going? To, so, before that, I just want to create DT addition. So, what is the type of this one? This is the type of Data table. So the scope is let it be out. I mean, out of scope. I mean to say that out of sequence. And I'm just going to create the instantiation of this data table. System dot data dot. Now what I done here, I'm just reading this entire information and then push it into one data table. Before that, I just created one type of data table variable. That variable I'm going to pass it as it should. Here, just click to come up with add headers. Just click on this add headers and save this. So, but I, I am the range is no read range and this range I'm just keeping null. I don't want to read the entire. I'm not. This is a dynamically right. I'm not. I'm not creating any static range here. <coughs> now my table is ready. What is the next step? I want to look through the entire my data table and I want to read the 
first row of information, I want to sum up these two rows and I want to write it into where I want to write, I want to write it into this cell. What is the cell? C2, C3, C4, and so on. So let's look to a part. There is. And what is the next one? I want to look through this one for the for each. So we have a desired um, activity call for each row, which is specifically designed for data table. Okay, this is specifically designed for data table for loop through the data table. So for which data table you want to loop through that? So here DT addition. So so when, 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 whenever no, it is looped in the first row, it is going to push it into this row object. From this row object, I can able to access the columns. So before that, I want to store the, so I want to store the number one and number two information into one variable. Right? For that, I am going to declare int number one string okay Mint. so I'm between one more variable I want to store result operation so obviously I need one more uh, variable result create one more variable I'll come to later that so first of all this could be where you want to ask you want to assign some variable so into that so I need assign activity so in the assign activity so what is this number number one how to read information from there so row of the column name so what is the first column name which we have already we have this column name right of this so we can go with the there are two ways are there one is index and column name better always go with the if it was zero also it is going to work here but make sure that what I am trying to say so when I work with any data table operation so make sure that try with the column name if it passes zero right tomorrow that the structure may be changed right by the time so you are the I mean rope will not work over there because your column names are I mean column indexes are different, right? If you give the column names alone, obviously you are uh, the flow will be work even though you are uh, table uh, the column names are interchange or something. So here is showing error like because I need to convert this into integer because I want to show integer, right? So that's how you have to convert it. Dot to int of 32. Okay. Now I want to read the second row information, second column information as well. So for this, so int number two, same thing like convert dot to int of so row of Number two, now I have read the values of the first row information. After that, what I want to do, I want to do operations called addition of these two numbers. So let's uh, here, what is that? Int result equals to number one plus save this. Now, where do I want to push exactly location? Right, I want to push it into of the sum of these two numbers. Now I have done it like I have read this number and I have read this number, and finally I I, I just add these two numbers and I store it into one more variable. This variable I want to push it into this C2 range. So I'm going to C2 cell 
So, so we now write cell activity. So I think we are going with Excel application scope operation, right? Let's drag and drop right cell. So which sheet you are pushing and which cell, I mean, in which cell you are going to write the data. Here, C. That means it's C2. Can I hard code this value here? Can anyone tell me if I hard code what will happen? The data might get override on the same column again. Exactly. See, you should not hard code this here C2 because if you hard code it C2 here, what will happen each and every time? This is going to add this value and it's going to push it here. And add this value, it's going to push it in the same location. Add it here, it's going to push it in the same location. So this C2, I mean, I know the column is C, but the values and the range of this cell, right? So make sure that it should be dynamically should be changed here. So delete this. And for dynamic operation, so I'll just create one more variable in the type. So int counter in the type. So by default, I just given two here. Okay, because by default it's going to start with two, right? So two and here C plus int counter dot string. So it is first of all two C two. Then after that, after writing first row, what I want to do, I want to increment row by one. So if you want to increment the operation, so make sure that we need a same activity. So here, what I want to do, int counter equals to int counter plus one. That's all. I'm done with this. So this. Here, right, I just, uh, Visible operation is there for Excel application scope, even though if you can open this application, I mean this, if you run it, so I can see how these two operations are adding and how this uh, value is writing into the column C, you can see it. Save this. And then how I'm going to read the information from Excel and how you're going to write it in Excel, the same operations. You can do it in the same file. Any queries in this example? No more. Okay. I'm creating so far, we have seen like how to create a data table and static data table. Now, if we want to push data into the data table, there are two ways we can push the data into the data table. The one is I can push it as an array or else I can push it as a data row. Let us go ahead with how we are going to push the data into data or we are going to our array. I'm just creating a new sequence data table okay. Okay. so what is the first step what the first step I want to do if you want first of all I want to create build data table same way I'm just going to create a I think I already have created one student table from previous example right so I'm just going to use quick copy this and uh, this here. So here what I want to do, I want just want to create so BT student. So this is 
type of the data table. Let's put the instantiation of this. So once then, so what is the next step? I want to push data into, okay. I'm just, uh, I, I want to push like a student. So before that, so I just, I, I want to remove this data table. I mean, uh, the data into the data table. So I just remove it. I don't have any work into that. So I, I know the columns. This is my columns. And that's all. I want to push data into that. So before I push the data, right, let's say example, the real time. So you want to grab the student information from the screen. I want to push it into the data table. So here, before that, I need to declare the variables to store the values into that, right? So obviously, int SMO. Quickly, let's create a uh, variable for this int SMO and str name as a type of string. Then, after this, str quotes here type of string. Then the next one is S int T. This is very, very important. So this is how we are going to exact, we are going to do it in real time environment. Now I have a table so which can be only columns. And here, here we go. I have created the call, I mean the variables for storing the information of student information on student. And find the student, I'm going to push it into data table operation here we go so i want to assign some values into that right how we are going to assign time being i'm just going to assign the static values into that so in upcoming sessions i'm going to show how to read the data from the you know from windows application how we are going to store it dynamically into that variable so we'll see in later now it shows smo yeah i'm just creating hot coded values this value you may be getting from the so this has an open assembly. Then I'm just going to create, I'm just going to push what is that str name. So I just want David and uh, here str course. Study MS. This is in one more account with the call. Here, uh, I just want some number. So, sir, no. So, for what I done here, yeah, we, we, we forgot to change this type of this one so that it's going like that. Now, now I just I have data, right? Now what is the next thing? I want to add this entire. No, no, I want to add go to this data table and add data. Row. So we have two types of you know activities. Like if you want to add you know column or if you want to add row, so we can use it. But I'm I'm using add data row. I told you, right? There are two ways you can push the data into the um, into the data table. One is array row and data row. So let us go ahead with array. In the array, right? So very simple. We have values. So what is that? Int S N O S D R. We have the exact column. I mean, so we have to give column ways, we have to pass the values here. Then what is the next one? It's their name, it's their course, and finally int That's all. Click OK. And so which table and which table you want to push? So which table DT student. So my table is fresh. See here I'm pushing the values into that. That's all. So now what I done? I created a table, which contains only columns. I'm not adding any, any data into that. So here, I'm just declaring four variables here, because since I have four columns into the data table, right? So I have created four rows, I mean four variables. Into the four variables, I just push some static data into that. 
So by using add row activity, so I'm going to push data into the data table. There are two ways we can push data into the data table. The one is array, the second one is data row. So the time being, I'm just using the array row. So in the array row, very simple, I just given all the columns with big comma separated. Here, here, column name, the, in the variable name in this SNGO, comma, S name, comma, code, comma, P. The same order, which have, which order is we have to follow the word table design order. We cancel, save this, and if you want to print the information on the screen, right, how you are going to print, we have a data access called output data table. I can grab this. Here we go. As I think we have seen this, which table we want to convert in. It's a student. Click OK. The text is Control 4. OK. So STR output. And click OK. So obviously, the STR output is going to add it into your variable panel. Here we go. STR add. The output is got added outside string because. So this you know, uh, output data table is going to take up the values from the data table and find it's going to convert into string. Now if you want to print this information on the screen, so we have item activity. So by using item activity, I'm going to push the data into the screen. So what is that? DT student. Okay. STR output. Now, save this and then <laughs> here we go. It is called added into my, it is called added into my data. I mean, into the layer table. If you want to push this thing to layer table, I mean, you want to push it into Excel sheet by using Excel operation, I can push it into Excel sheet. It's very simple by using weight right range activity. So I can push data into the Excel sheet. So this is how, this is the one, the first example, right? This is the one we are going to use how to push the data by using arrays. It is going to create one more uh, sequence called data row. How I'm going to how I how I'm going to push the data by using data row activity, like data row concept. So I'm just same thing, entire information I'm going to copy from here. Copy and I'm going to paste it into this. Here instead, okay. So before this one, right? I just want to create one data row object. So how we are going to create data row object? So dr row here is type of it should be data row. Dot data dot data row. Now I have created one data row object, and here this as I'm not changing anything. So before this, what I want to do, I want to create a new row to this data table. So what is the data table? So dr row for this row for which table we are going to push it. Dt student dot new row. So I have created one new row. This new row, right, is going to push it into DR. So in DR, we have object. So in the object, right, I'm going to push the data. How we are going to push? DR row of, what is the column name? Here, SNO is the column name. Now I have a same values. The same thing we have to do it for. So what is, we have, we have a row object. In the row object of, column name. What is the column name? Here, yes, name. Same thing, you have to do it for quote as well. D 
PR O of so what is this? So course. And finally PR O of so what is the cost column? P. So what I done? I'm just repeating the same. So so far we have seen like how data we have to push into the table by using array, array operations. Now I'm going to push you know by using data row concept. So data row concept is something that is one of we have a data row active, I mean this we have data row class. So by using this, I'm going to push one one row from the and this is one row from the uh, this column. I'm sorry, this table. If you what I'm doing here for this row, right? I'm going to create one new row from the data table. That row I'm going to assign to my row object, data row object. So from this data row, I'm going to pass I have no I one row. From this row, I'm going to do the column wise. That means nothing but DR, the first column, the second column, third column, the same thing. I'm going to assign the value here. So that's finally, right? Oh, I have data, I have row. I have I mean I have created an entire row. That's it. This entire row I want to push it into my data uh, table by using I add, add data row and to the instant here I'm going to delete this and click OK. Instead, I'm going to pass data row object. That's all. Save this and then it The data is for adding into one. Any questions here? This is how we have to push this. So the data table is very, very important. So where we have to create the data into the data table and uh, very simple operations in real time. So most of the cases we are going to use the data table. Since we are going to deal with you know the collection of data to make sure that if we want the operations on it, to make sure that we are going to convert in data table from the data table I want to do the operations. If you want to write write operations, you want to write read operations. This is how we have to do it in the data environment. So after this, I want to clear my data table. How we are going to clear data table? So we have clear data table activity. That means that it's removing the data from the data table. So which table we want to create it, this is student. We try to print off of this. I'm trying to print it again. So save this. So I'm just Got printed only once, right? The data we have clearing from the data is showing only column names alone. So this is how clear if you want if you want to do operations on it, I want to remove this. So this is how you have to clear the data from I have to clear the data from data from the data tables. So any queries today? So that's all about the data table uh, concepts like uh, 
read write operation and do through that I'm going to push it into this. So in and on how we are going to dynamically read the data from the you know, application, how we are going to push this. So after we we'll discuss control flow activity, then we'll work on it. Any queries so far? No more. The next important concept is the arguments. So so far we have seen like we have worked in a single what I'm trying to say, we have worked in only single um workflow. I think you guys have time, right? So let us thank me one more 15 minutes. Yeah. Great. Okay, I'm going to quickly uh, navigate to the arguments chapter, very, very important thing. Let's close this. Arguments. The arguments is nothing but which are used to pass. I want to pass data from one workflow to another flow. So let's say, example, you are working in real time uh, in real time environment, right? You are working with multiple pages. In the multiple pages, right? I don't want, uh, let's say, example, logged in user information. This information I want to pass up I and mean, across my all workflow, all the you know, examples. How we are going to pass it? We want to pass it by right? So by using arguments, I can pass the value to the other workflows. So they store the data dynamically and pass it on. So if we want any you know, dynamic uh, change variable that is across the, so let's say example, one value is there and the student name. So I'm going to say that here, right? The value may be changed into different, different environments, right? The same thing, if we want to declare one variable, so nothing but last updated user information, if we want to do this, right? So I'll, I'll push it into one page, one argument into one grammar and navigate to some other page where the last update information may be different, right? That's information dynamically changing. That information I'm going to push it into this argument. Again, this argument I can share with other, other examples also. That is what it's trying to say. So UEFA Studio supports a large number of type of arguments. That means that the argument may be any type of argument. So if you want to pass Integer information, if you want to pass it, if you want to pass string information, you can pass across the, across the, uh, I mean, across the examples. If you want a Boolean also, I can Boolean, I can pass Boolean argument, object, array, and the, so even though it's there, they will also, you can pass it as argument to the other approach. So arguments are very important. Arguments have three types of directions. The one is in, out, in, out, and property. I mean, actually four we have, but only three is, you know, the properties and the construction from UI path. Now, let us discuss about in, out, in, out directions. So this is basically your argument panel. Let's put the UI path here, right? If you want to create an argument, this is your argument panel. So this is, you know, name of the argument. So direction. So direction is that somebody has three types of, you no, know, I mean, four types of directions. So one is in, out, in, out, and property. So in, when I declare this in, uh, what will happen, right? I can pass one input to the other workflow that's all. That means that, so I am A, I am A, I am XAML. So I have some data, but that is input to the other X XAML file. But then what will happen? Let us create one argument with, you know, uh, one in direction. So from A, I am going to push one value to the, you know, that means that XAML B. Let us you know, create one example so that it will be better understand. Let us complete with three part in out. The out is what is out here. So I I need some data from the other XAML file. Let's say example, I have XAML A and XAML B. So XAML A is going to send one empty argument to the XAML B. This way, XAML B is going to store some value into the out out argument. And finally, it's going to send this example A. I think you got it. In and out. In is nothing but very simple. I'm going to push one value to some other, but I mean, what, I mean, some other example. Now, coming to the out, I need the data from some other example. So, by the time I'm going to get argument is out, so make it pretty much simple. I'm going to pass this empty argument to some other workflow. From him, I'm going to get the data. That's all. In out. So, 
you know this what you know this very very important i have one data input data so you want to process this other guy he is going to take up my input and process it and find is going to append some value to that and find is going to send it to me pretty much simple right so i have in so make sure that i want i have to pass some value to him he is going to modify that he, he may be required that as an input and find is going to operate it and the find is going to send one output argument like you no know, um I mean, the value into that, and um, is going to store the out value into that. It's going to send back to me. That is how in out is going to work. So let us you know going to create one. I mean, example so that you will get understanding. Let's create a new project. In direction, then here let us create one value variable that is uh, int so int number and particular one. This is variable type integer. So by using an activity, I'm assigning some value into that. That is int number equals to 100. This 100, I want to pass it to this some other workflow. Let's create one more workflow callable callable workflow let's create in so here I have to create argument right how to create argument here arg okay arg int Number to the direction of integer, so the direction of in and the type is integer. So I want to print this, you know, in direction value, right? How we are going to print in, in direction value? That's, so what is in direction value here? Or in number dot system. See here in this you no know, workflow, I and mean, I say that in this XAML, I'm not created, I'm not assigning any values to this. This is my indirection demo. So what is going here? Here it should be integer, right? Fine. Now this value I want to pass it to this callable workflow. Now we have an activity called invoke. Workflow file. So I want to invoke another workflow, right? Just click here. Which while you want to call here? Callable workflow. When I click on OK, immediately just click on import arguments. So because before that, before you call this, you have to save this one. Print save properly. Save this and come back here. Input click on import. Obviously, what are the arguments you have declared? This is going to show here. So, here this is where I want to pass the value. So, what is the value I want to pass it here? So, int int number one. And save this. I hope you got it now. Very simple. I'm just passing this under to this row. Here I'm printing the value. But I'm not printing the value here. Here, here I'm printing the value. In direction value is all in number dot two string. If you want to run, where you want to run, I want to run from here because here only I have this call this one, right? You have to call from here, save this, and run back. See 
see here the underend is printed from workflow callable workflow xaml because i got the data from indirection demo indirection is demo is one of the xaml where i'm going to pass value to the some other workflow if you want to edit argument right you can edit, you click on the edit argument and you can just click here the value you want to change so this is how in direction um, argument will be work. Let us create one more sample called out direction. Out direction demo. Create. Same thing, right? Here, if you want to, I want here, I want to pass it as an argument, right? An out. So before that, I have to create it here. So what is that? Okay, instead, let's say in callable workflow, right? I'm going to change this one. This out. This is a string. This is time being. How do you tell right click and disability? Let us attain some value here. So, what is the value here? Here, or in number equals to some number. Let's remove this and save this. Now, this is the value, I mean, callable workflow, which is contains some out argument, so which it has some, I need data from this workflow to this workflow. So here, what do you want to do? You have to, first of all, directly create um, one variable here, so int number. I had to play a variable in that variable, right? I'm going to I'll pass this one to the other one. In the same variable, I'll get the value. How I'm going to get the value in work for profile. So this workflow you want to call it here, callable workflow. And it has I think it's not saved properly. Go back to here, save it. How direction demo? Eight argument. We can import arguments. Here we go. This part imported. So here, it is an out direction. See, it is an out direction. Int member. Here I'm passing empty. See, because int member, I don't have any value, right? Here I'm passing empty value to that. And let's click OK. Now, right line. Here, I'm going to print the value. Int this nothing but how direction nothing, right? One thing D, it is declare the value in callable workflow, right? And how I just and I got it back from this callable workflow and then printed here. This is out, the out is argument is going to work. Any queries in, in and out? Chant 
creating one more sequence called in our demo. Let's stick it with the same example. So here I'm creating one value int. In number int here right declare as a default is on a center value. This value I'm going to print it before calling. So this value before calling I'm printing some value that is called in number of question. Now I printed now this is somebody's copy, Nicole. In the call people, right? Here. I'm going to print the indirection value first of all because I will get the in some in, in value from the in, in our demo, right? But I want to print it. So let us enable this activity in value first of all. So this one to make sure that that I want to change it is in out, right? This is also integer. Now, so I'm going to override that value because dynamically some value may be changing that I want to return to him again, right? So here, first of all, I'll get 100. This 100 I'm going to override with 120. In our demo, I'm just coming here. So what do you want to do? Invoke or flow. Let's save this. Callable. Save this. Coming back here. This invoke not flow file. Here, just call the workflow, call the workflow, and click on import argument. See, still it is not changed, right? So let's go back to here and let's save properly. Yes, now it's for save. Now import argument. Here we go with the button to make sure that the direction should be changed. Here, what do you want to pass it in the now? You want to pass it as int number and just click OK. So after calling this, if you want to print the value which contained into the int number, so and just uh like and just write it. After calling in number four two, save this and run. Here we go. So before calling is hundred. This is what I just printed, right? Here before calling is this content number hundred. So for callable workflow and this print, what is our callable workflow? This in value I got it from the input in, in our demo. I'm printing in value here and come back to here. So finally, after calling right here, I'm overriding this one and this I'm getting hundred. But I'll override this operation with one twenty. I just wrote this dynamically see let's say example this dynamically changing this value. This value I'm going to push it into a rank input demo. So I got it as I got it as a variable. In the variable, I'll get the update value from this. And finally, after printing this, I got an Any queries? That's all about in, out, in out. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Any, any queries? No more. No more. No more.
Good. Okay. So last topic for today is nothing but imported namespaces. So what is a namespace? So normally, right, in um, in normally in .NET, what we are doing, if you want to uh, you know, perform any operations on the on data table, so make sure that or let's say example database operations. So in the database operation, if you want to perform any database operations, right? So make sure that what we have to do, we have to import the namespace. So what is the namespace? System dot system dot data dot SQL client. So if you want to import this namespace, I can get the, all the classes from this namespace and I can use that one. I can proceed further. The same thing here also, same thing. If you want to import any namespace like you now, we will dot have namespace here. So you can go ahead with you no know, import namespace op uh, option. You can import the namespace. So what is a namespace? First of all, a namespace is a collection of classes. If you want to import system dot data, so what will happen? I can able to access data row class, data row class. So we have different types of classes into that. So it's called a namespace and a collection of you know, classes. So can resource different types of data. For example, if you imported like the namespace system and data, where you can able to access their table, data view, data column, data row, all this stuff. How we are going to import this? But let's click to the UI path. So we have imports. So already have imported system dot. These are name already imported namespaces. See system dot collection, system dot collection appendix, system dot data. So system dot link you, system dot net. If you want to mail operation, so system dot main dot. If you want to import any namespace, right? System dot dot data SQL client is added here. Once it got added here, then I can able to access the, all the classes from the SQL client, like you know, SQL connection, SQL command, SQL data adapter, something like that. I can able to access all the classes from the this namespace. So we'll discuss in detail in the session, like if you go ahead with the database operations, how we are going to do. We'll see in details. That's it from my end. Do you have any queries? Or else you can go to my end up Any questions, guys? No, Mohan. Uh, but I have a request from my side. This is Chiran here. So, yes, send us the record meeting recording. Sorry? Uh, this meet, meeting has been recorded, right? Yes, yes, it's recorded. Uh, could you send us the recordings, the today's and the previous classes? Yes, yes, yes. So, I think I'm going to, I'm going to ask money to send all this stuff here. Yeah, please. So any queries? So whatever we discussed today is a very, very important concept. So obviously we are going to use it in a real time environment. Any queries? No. No more. Okay. Thank you. That's it for today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.